For those in HR, specifically within hourly waged industries or shift-based industries, what does a timeline look like for your onboarding process? If it doesn't start before a new hire's first day, there's definitely a higher chance of the employee ghosting you before they can even get in the door. We're bringing on SHRM Senior Director Amber Clayton, and her and I will be talking about how to expedite the onboarding process compliantly before the new hire's first day to help ensure that they don't ghost you. Let's get right into it. And it perfectly kind of feeds us into this next part, talking about how to expedite the onboarding process for new hires before their first day. I think that this is a really big missed opportunity here. So I'm going to pull up uh, this next slide super quick on kind of what that looks like in terms of recommended steps here. Um, So talking about, uh, you know, engaging hires before their first day, looking at things like a welcome kit, assigning a person to contact, a buddy, as I've been told, uh, you know, requesting feedback, uh, what those intros might look like and discussing onboarding before it even begins. Um, Amber, my question for you is what steps do you recommend to onboard new hires before their first day to ensure they're ready to hit the ground running on day one? Yeah, that's a great question. And we do get that question pretty frequently in the Knowledge Center because one of the concerns that comes out of it is if we make the employee or the the candidate who has not started yet fill out the paperwork ahead of time, do we have to pay them for for filling out that paperwork? And there's no clear answer on this. So, you know, typically what I would encourage employers to do is to provide them a package of information with their tax forms and, um, and, you know, things that they might need to read and fill out and say, you know, here it is. If you'd like to, you know, fill it out ahead of time, that's great. If not, we can do it during the the first day we have, uh, we'll sit down with you. We'll go over the paperwork with you, but just giving them an opportunity if they want to, to complete that paperwork um, beforehand. And maybe just the the necessary forms, like the tax forms that you wanna get into the payroll system. Um, The I-9 form is something that could be filled out in advance and a lot of employers may not realize that, but they can do that in advance, but they have to uh, to see the documentation once the person begins employment and then fill out their employer portion of it. So, you know, there are things that can be done before uh, the actual start date and you know, giving them the, the benefit package so they can review it with their families to determine you know, what type of health insurance they wanna sign up for. I mean, all of those things are really helpful for them to see before they even come in the door. And then of course, when they come in the door, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I've heard and I've seen is, uh, oh, we have a new hire orientation and the new hire orientation is an hour long where we fill out paperwork. And the onboarding process is very short. And I would just say, you know, onboarding takes a while. It takes a while for people to become acclimated to the job. So you want to have that new hire process where you're kind of going through the administrative things you're going through and, you know, telling them about the location of the break room, the bathrooms, and, you know, all of those things like that. But you want to make sure too, that you have an onboarding process where you pair them with someone, give them a point of contact, uh, a buddy, somebody that they can ask questions to. And so they don't feel like they're alone in this. And, you know, sometimes they don't want to come to the boss directly because then they feel like, well, this boss is going to think that I don't know anything, um, you know, or that I'm asking too many questions. So pairing them with someone within the organization is a really good way to help retain those individuals and build relationships with others as well. Uh, also, too, there's uh, training, you know, making sure that there's a formalized training program. Uh, I, I've seen and I've heard and I've been in a situation where I've just been thrown to the wolves. Uh, you go in there and it's like, OK, you know how to do this go right ahead and there's really no formal process and you're kind of scrambling going, how do I, what do I do? And it's instances like those that make you feel like, okay, this is not right. You know, I I don't like this culture. You know, I might want to move on, you know? Um, So, you know, just having some processes, some trainings, a buddy, mentor, all of those things can be really helpful in the onboarding training and retaining those individuals. Absolutely. It actually reminds me of um, one of our clients we have called Streets Team Enterprises. They're great. We love them. We work with uh, their HR over there. Her name's Tani. And I was talking to her about, you know, their model, their business model. They work primarily with uh, those who are homeless and giving them roles in their community, giving them jobs and doing just a lot of community based work. It's it's an incredible organization. I highly recommend you guys checking them out. But, um, you know, accountability is a really big part and kind of 
teaching uh, these individuals, these new employees that they onboard a lot throughout the year. And they're kind of, instead of recruiting, they're more um, accepted into Street's team. And it, it's really hard to kind of hold that accountability aspect and streamlining that onboarding process is huge. If you could get a kickstart on it, amazing. If you could kind of have an onboard on the mobile app, you know, Workforce has a great mobile app, gets them onboarded super quickly and, and quite literally minutes. That's amazing. It's already, there's accountability to be said there. It's already kind of gotten them through the door in a sense, even if it is in a technological way, they've already kind of committed to a certain extent. So yeah, that accountability aspect Tani was saying is huge to be able to already get them onboarded before their first day. It's mm -hmm. absolutely massive. I'm curious, you know, what your thoughts are on how HR could kind of get ahead or, you know, streamline the paperwork, you know, the mundane part of onboarding while also staying compliant. I think that's a huge part of it. Yes. I, I think, again, looking at the documentation that's required of employees, uh, you know, of course, there's going to be required forms like your tax forms, like your I-9. Um, there may be state required forms as well that need to be completed. Um, but, you know, looking at the other forms, you know, and, and the length of those forms and what you're asking for and are things being are they redundant is it really necessary for them to fill out you know x number of policy acknowledgements when you have a handbook and you you know those things are in the handbook as well so you know really kind of looking at everything that needs to be completed and making sure that it's necessary or required um and not just uh you know something for them to to sign off on because you think that there might be a risk for whatever reason that they didn't sign off on this particular policy. Um, so, uh, you know, looking at that and then, of course, the automated piece of it, that's always helpful, making sure that, uh, you know, if they have laptops, computers that they can work on, uh, tablets, uh, that they might be able to do things that are electronic. And that's easier for employers, too. Um, they can electronically store their records, uh, you know, so that's, you know, maybe prevents them from having to have big file cabinets with a lot of files in it and, you know, having to deal with all those things. So many employers actually do electronic, you know, record keeping. Uh, so I think, you know, those, those things can help streamline the process. Yeah, absolutely. We talked a little bit, obviously, about automation, right? In terms of other method, methods, tools, technology, anything like that, do you recommend for delivering a little bit more effective pre-employment training to newer hires? Kind of, again, making sure that they're walking through the door with some footing, some kind of sense of what they expect or what they know that they're going to walk into. So I would be careful about the pre-employment training just because if there is training that's done before the start date, it could be compensable and actually changes that higher date. So you want to be careful about that. But what I use, what I encourage and I've done for many years is having a job preview. So as part of your interview process and your hiring process, allowing that individual to come into the organization, to sit with an employee, to see the workplace, the work environment, to talk to other employees, to get a sense of what the job is and the culture is. And that is a really good way for them to kind of see the inside and get the scoop and see whether or not it's really the right fit for them. And that actually, uh, the, the process in itself, I know I've been through it myself. And I've really appreciated being able to do that because I've looked at something and said, you know what, I just, I don't know if this is the right job for me. And I'd rather that happen in the beginning of the process versus me having to go through the whole hiring process, paying for the background checks, hiring that person, and then finding out within a couple of weeks that they are just not working out well. So I would say, you know, a job preview is a really good way to give them a sense of what the job is. Just make sure that it's not training. Cause again, that could be considered work and and compensable time. Absolutely, absolutely. In terms of, you know, again, going back to communication, a huge principle that we always talk about during these webinars, how can HR maintain communication with new hires before their start date, you know, to answer any questions, to help with any missing information? What do you recommend here without feeling like it might be overkill or you might be scaring them off in a sense? Yeah, I mean, obviously you don't want to be calling them every day. Um, For sure. <laughs> but you could certainly say, um, here's what the next steps in the process are. And I'm going to contact you in two days. You know, and just keeping them abreast of what's happening in the process, I think, is really important. I wouldn't say, like, like I said, you know, you don't want to call them all the time and, and feel like you're hounding them or anything like that, because that's just going to push them away. But I think as long as you give them the expectations, I think that 
will go a long way. Um, and just making sure that you're not leaving long periods of time where you're not speaking to them, um, because again, you could lose them in that process. So uh, keeping the communication open, but not too much. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I think, you know, talking a little bit about this pre-employment training or, you know, talking about onboarding before their start date, it kind of keeps that communication channel naturally opened. Mm -hmm. It keeps them top of mind as you as a company and saying, hey, we're still here. We're excited to see you walking through that door <laughs> on the very first day. And yeah, it, again, it, I think naturally that already kind of maintains that communication channel that we're talking about here and making sure that there's not too long of a lull that they're not forgetting about you. I think there's something to be said about still selling yourself even after they might have accepted the offer at the end of the day because you know they're not liable to you know they're not tied to you completely there is always an aspect that they could ghost between the time that they you know that you've given their offer letter or given their offer and the time that they've walked through the door already on the first day i think it's that really precarious time that you really need to look out for Yes, absolutely. And, you know, it could be as simple as, you know, sending them an email and just saying, you know, we're really excited about you starting next week. Uh, you know, something like that, it, it can go a long way. Uh, the other piece to it, too, and and something around the, the hiring process or the steps, I would say, you know, make sure that you are welcoming these individuals, that you're prepared for them to start. I think one of uh, the big frustrations that I've heard from employees is that they get to the work site, their desk is not set up. They don't have the technology. It's, you know, the employer is unprepared for them to be there. Uh, make sure that everything is in place so that when they come, they feel welcome. Uh, you know, tell your other employees that these individuals are starting, have them welcome them as well. Uh, you can do lunch with people when they first start to get to know them on a personal level and just to start that whole, um, you know, relationship building. Because these are individuals that are, if they're full time, you're going to be working with them a lot and uh, and you want to get to know them and you can ask questions that maybe you couldn't ask in the interview process like, oh, you know, do you have any dogs? Um, you know, things like that. And just making them feel like uh, they're they're being brought into the team, that they're part of the team. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think kind of going back to that last slide, talking about beginning those intros and it can either be beginning intros from the employee, the new hire side, the candidate, the applicant, the person who's filling out the application side of things, or those who are already on the team saying, hey, why don't we write a card? Why don't we send a little video? Something that could be really, really nice, again, to keep them interested as a new hire. Uh, for new hires, it can be, hey, fill out this like little fun fact fill out something, you know, about uh, your dog or something, your family that you want to share with us, anything like that. And it kind of already bridges that communication with the entire team and it already tethers them. There's that loyalty that's being built before they walk in the door. And I think that's really important. It, it kind of goes overlooked a lot of the times where if, you know, uh, existing member of the team sends the new hire a message saying, hey, I'm really excited to meet you. You know, I'll be your buddy. I'll be your POC. Mm -hmm. I think that's really special and it it really does build that loyalty virtually before there's even any in-person contact there, especially within these shift-based industries. That's huge. That's so important. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Well, I want to uh, end off on our high note, my favorite question to ask. What are one or two top tips, actions, or takeaways that you can give our audience to kind of walk away with to better stop new hires from ghosting at the end of the day? Yeah, I, again, you know, making sure that your your brand, your job descriptions, uh, those things are are detailed, they're accurate, that information is really important because again, these individuals are researching your companies just like you're out there trying to to bring them in. So make sure that, you know, it looks good on your website, you know, and and check out the reviews from other employees as well and make sure that you are following up on those as necessary because again, people who are looking for jobs, they're looking at the employee reviews, they're looking at your website, they're looking at your job description. So make sure that you don't have anything in there that might deter them from applying for a job. Uh, and then of course, the communication piece of it, making sure that when you do 
research or, or when you're reviewing the resumes and you're reaching out to people, you know, set up appointments, to, you know, make sure that they're comfortable talking on the phone or on video if it's a video camera, um, you know, just having that communication with them, making sure that you are uh, meeting them when you say you're going to meet them. I think that's really important. And so many times uh, there's situations where the employer is late to an interview or maybe they forget to call, um, you know, those those things happen. You want to make sure that you are, you know, again, uh, keeping those appointments, talking to those individuals when you say you're going to talk to them and uh, in the communication piece of it. And just, you know, formalizing the process and making sure that you're doing um, the same thing consistently with all of the candidates, I think is really important. Uh, making sure you've got your interview questions in place, uh, making sure that you can answer questions. I know this is a question I get frequently, and that is, um, you know, what's your workplace culture like? And you want to be honest about it. I tell people, be transparent, give them the good, the bad, the ugly, because at the end of the day, you're interviewing them just like they're interviewing you and you want them to feel comfortable in this job just as we want you to feel comfortable. And so you want it to be a good fit, be honest with them, be transparent about what it is and you're gonna have a better relationship with those individuals. And somebody's really gonna wanna come on board if you are you know, candid about these things. I think it's really important. That was a segment from our webinar on how to stop new hires from ghosting you. If you're curious on more videos such as this, click on this video here. If you want to check out more content similar to HR within shift-based industries, go to our channel. We have a ton of more content there and be sure to subscribe.